Hi, this is Jens, and this is part five of a five-part series on DNA in the Hayes murder case. In this part, part five, I'll be addressing the question of why I haven't asked for new DNA tests. CBS Morning News actually published a very good report about this last year, and I've linked that up for you below. The question of why I haven't asked for new DNA tests has been framed in a way to point the finger at me. People say that I must be afraid of the results, but that's absolutely not the truth. Fact is, I have asked for new DNA tests. I've written a new prosecuting attorney of Bedford County, man's name is Wesley Nance, emails, and I've linked those up for you below like I always link up everything. I asked him for DNA tests, and he wrote me back that he would not perform them on his own initiative. And that's all I can do. I cannot file a petition. Or at least I cannot file a successful petition because I don't meet the requirements of the law. I think we're talking about the question of whether you could file an unsuccessful petition. A petition for new DNA tests is really like any other government paperwork. You have to meet certain conditions. If you're asking for unemployment benefits, you have to actually be unemployed. It's the same with the law in Virginia for DNA tests. It's set out in a law called 19.2.327.1 and it explains exactly what you have to do to get DNA tests done. Soaring is referring to a Virginia law that says a convicted person who is seeking new DNA testing must meet certain criteria. They must be able to say under oath that items being tested have not been altered, tampered with, or contaminated. Soaring says that's something he cannot do. I've linked up the law for you below so you can read it yourself. And I've also linked up the emails that I exchanged with a prosecuting attorney, Wesley Nance. I know it seems kind of strange that I'd be writing emails back and forth with a prosecutor, but Wesley Nance is actually a different kind of prosecutor. He's a straight guy and I trust him. And what he wrote me was that the samples that are in his possession for DNA testing are completely contaminated. The reason for that is, is that over the decades, an unknown number of lawyers, detectives, and reporters went into the evidence locker and touched all of these samples without gloves, with their bare hands. That means that their DNA profiles are now on these items. And if you were to test them, you don't know whether the DNA profiles come from the time of the crime or from one of these later people who touched the evidence items in the locker. There's no date stamp on DNA. Nowadays, everybody understands that you're supposed to wear plastic gloves and a face visor when you enter a, a, an evidence locker. But back then, people didn't know that, so they touched this with their bare hands. There are actually at least three TV documentaries that show reporters touching the items in the evidence locker with their bare hands. And there's just no way to tell whose DNA is on these items now, so DNA testing would be pointless. And that's not me saying it, that's Wesley Nance saying it, the prosecutor. And now we get to the second condition in the Virginia statute on DNA testing, 19.2327.1. The second condition is, is that the applicant, that would be me, has to prove that chain of custody is intact. And the prosecutor, Wesley Nance, wrote me in his emails that chain of custody is not intact. In fact, for many years, there were absolutely no logbooks kept of who was walking in and out of that evidence locker. And without such logbooks, there's no chain of custody which would then allow DNA testing to be done. Can Yen Soaring file a petition in Virginia to have DNA retested? I think he could file the petition, but it would have a fatal flaw attached to it. Which is? That the items in question have been contaminated over the years. There's really no log of who looked at it, uh, what was looked at, what was not. Why do you need chain of custody? If you take DNA tests to court, you have to be able to prove that the evidence was always under the control of the sheriff's department and who actually came in and out of that evidence locker, possibly bringing something in, possibly taking something out. And that we do not have. No records were kept. There's no paperwork on any of this. And that means if DNA tests are performed, I could not use these DNA tests to get my case back into court. And of course, if I can't take the DNA test to court, they're pointless and no court is going to allow them to be used. Again, this is the prosecutor saying it. Chain of custody was not intact. Logbooks were not kept. As a result of that, the DNA test results, if they were to be done, would be worthless. 
So now we get to the third condition in this Virginia statute on new DNA testing. And it says that the DNA test results, if performed, have to prove the actual innocence of the applicant. But this is not actual innocence the way you or I would understand it. It's actual innocence as it's defined legally in this statute. Please read it yourself. What it says is that no rational trier of fact could convict but for the new evidence. Sounds strange, right? And they interpret this really, really narrowly. In practice, what it means that if they perform DNA tests on the items that the prosecutor has, um, they would not find my DNA. I have no worries about that. That's obviously going to be the result. But that would not prove my actual innocence in the sense of this statute. Theoretically, I could have still been at the crime scene, but simply gotten lucky and not left my DNA. The absence of my DNA would be a strong indication that I'm innocent, but it would not be proof of actual innocence as defined in this statute. Prosecutor Wesley Nance actually addressed this point in his emails to me. Please read them yourself. What he wrote me is that new DNA tests would not solve the case. They would just inject chaos into the case. And you know what? He's actually right about that. So there are three conditions set out in this Virginia law, and I don't meet any of them. So yeah, I could submit a petition, but a judge would be forced to turn it down. And that's not my opinion. That's what prosecutor Wesley Nance wrote to me in his email. Look at it. You can read it yourself. What he says is essentially, sure, Mr. Zuring, you can turn in a petition, but a judge cannot possibly approve it. He would have to turn it down. So my next thought was, if this Virginia law 19.2327.1 is so strict, if it sets such high hurdles, um, maybe I could file a petition outside of this law. Maybe I could just ask a judge to do it kind of as an act of mercy. And I wrote the prosecutor, Wesley Nance, to ask him this specific question. He wrote back to me, yeah, Mr. Zuring, you can submit a petition outside of 19.2327.1, but the judge would be required to evaluate this petition under that statute even if you don't write the name of the law on the petition itself. In other words, I can't get out from under this very, very strict DNA petition law. Of course, I didn't want to accept that. So I asked my own attorneys and I even contacted an independent attorney out of Charlottesville. And they all confirmed to me that Wesley Nance, the prosecutor, was telling me the truth. I can't get around this statute, 19.2327.1. All of the attorneys confirmed that. If I file a petition, it has to be evaluated under that statute and I cannot meet the conditions under that statute. Now, all of this was taken up by CBS Morning News and throughout this video, you've seen excerpts from that broadcast. In this next clip, Wesley Nance addresses the question of whether I could actually submit a petition for DNA tests. Please listen to what the prosecutor has to say. I don't see this as a gotcha moment against Mr. Soaring. I, I think we're talking about the question of whether you could file an unsuccessful petition and whether that proves anything. The legal standard that the judge would have to make to order these items retested just simply isn't there. Look, folks, it's pretty easy. I'm innocent. I did not commit this crime. And I want Virginia to recognize that. But if I want Virginia to recognize my innocence, then I have to treat this issue seriously. If I submit a petition for new DNA tests, knowing that I cannot meet the criteria, then it's just a PR stunt and I'm not taking my own innocence seriously. I don't want to do that. I want to be taken seriously and I'm treating this issue seriously. There's one more thing to understand about all this. As the person convicted of this crime, I have to file a petition in court. But the prosecutor, Wesley Nance, he doesn't. He has these items in his possession and he can have them DNA tested anytime he wants to. He said he won't do it. I've asked him to have them DNA tested and he said no. It's all I can do, folks. All I can do is ask. I cannot force him to do it with a petition because I cannot meet the standards in the law. And that's the answer to the question of why I haven't asked for new DNA tests. I have asked for new DNA tests. I just haven't filed a petition that cannot possibly succeed.